So before I get started showing you how to split a bullet, you actually need to know how to shoot a bullet. So I created a tutorial showing how to do this right before this one, link in description and in the iCode if you're interested. I ended up making two minor changes to this, and that was I changed the name to shoot in the project settings. I added a shoot and a split for this tutorial. And then in the bullet, I slowed down the bullet a little bit so that it's easier to pay attention to it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do inside the process delta. I'm going to check if the wanting to split, aka if they're pressing the split button. So I'm going to do input is action just pressed split. And if they are, I'm going to call a function that's called split. I could do this all right here. That would work the exact same, but I like splitting things up into functions. So the first thing I'm going to have this function do is create a new bullet. That way we could give the look of splitting a bullet into two. So I'm going to do var new bullet equals duplicate. And that's going to duplicate this object. If you're actually building it outside, like my game, the power up handles the split, not the bullet, I would actually recommend instancing it. So you would do it kind of like how we did in the player. If you're creating a new bullet inside the bullet script, you're going to want to duplicate. So a new bullet is going to have the same velocity, position, and parent. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up real quick. New bullet dot velocity equals velocity. So that's saying the new bullet's velocity is going to be this bullet's velocity. Position is going to be a position. So if I get this parent, I'm going to add a child, and that's going to be the new bullet. So let's go ahead and run this, see what it does. So I have shoot to left click, split to right click. So I shoot and I click and it glitches out like that. The reason is actually because both of these have the exact same position. So the colliding with each other, you can't actually set the positions to be the exact same and have them have colliders. So I'm actually going to space the bullets apart. So I'm going to, when I shoot the bullet and split it, I want to set their position slightly away from each other. So that doesn't cause that. Now, in order to do this, I'm actually going to use a unit circle. So what I'm going to do is if the bullet was flying directly this way, I'm just going to tell the bullets move up this and the new one move down. And then if they're moving this way, 45 degrees, I want the first bullet to move up one unit or whatever amount, 135 degrees, and the other one to move down at 150 degrees. In order to accomplish this, we're going to get our current velocity and get the position rotated 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. We're then going to tell the respective bullets to move in those directions. So I'm actually going to create a function that'll do that for me. And this function is basically just going to be this math function. We're going to take our original x, our original y, and use cosine and the angle to give us a new x and new y. So I'm going to do rotate velocity. I'm going to pass the velocity and the angle. We're going to create a new velocity. And this is just going to be a vector 2 that is empty. I'm going to set the new velocities x, velocity dot x times cosine of the angle minus the velocity dot y times sine of the angle. And then I'm going to set the new velocity dot y equals velocity dot x times sine of the angle plus velocity dot y times cosine of the angle. And then I'm going to return new velocity. So if I were to pass in 90 degrees into that, that'll give me a 90 degree angle. So if it was shooting this way, and I pass in 90 degrees, that'll give me this one. If it's shooting this way and I pass in negative 90 degrees, that'll give me this one. So I could use that to tell it, hey, move apart this way and this way. So our new bullet dot position is going to be plus equal rotation velocity of our new bullet's velocity, and then 90 degrees, which is one half pi. And then we want to times that by some number that tells us how far it's going to move apart. So for space, spacing. And for now, this just, let's do a tiny number, see if that works. And then our bullet dot position is going to get the same thing. 
but instead of 90 degrees, we're going to do negative 90 degrees. So now that we've told them, hey, space out this way, space out that way, I didn't declare a bullet. This is actually itself. You don't declare a bullet. So if I shoot, that works. They space out just a little bit at any angle. Now what we want to do is actually get them to rotate because when you split, you want to have a look like it's got a split point and it's shooting out from there. So our new bullet, what we're going to do is very similar thing, but we're going to change the vector, not the position. So we're going to change this vector based on like 45 degrees or something. So that would be 1 fourth pi. So I'm going to do rotation degrees. And that's going to be 1 fourth pi. So this new bullet dot vector velocity. So this new bullet's velocity is going to be is going to be equal to rotate velocity of the new bullet's velocity of the rotation degrees. And our current bullet, so our velocity is going to equal rotate velocity of our velocity. And then because we move this one down and this one up, this one's going to rotate up, this one's going to rotate down, or counterclockwise and clockwise, this is going to be negative rotation degrees. If you get that mixed up, you could try swapping this one to negative, this one to positive. So let's run this. We shoot, split, shoot, split. Now that's a bit much. Let's see what we did there. One fourth pi. Oh, that's 0.4. Let's do 1 fourth pi. So 45 degrees. We shoot, split. Okay, that looks better. Now, you notice, it's actually every time we click, it splits. And I can quickly crash the game doing this. So I'm going to do a split only once. And to do that, I'm just going to have a already split. And that's going to be false. And then when they call split, I'm going to do if already split return. And then also I'm just going to have already split equals true. Now let's go ahead and run that. So it looks like the first bullet only splits once, but the second one keeps splitting. So let's go ahead and add that to the second one too. So just after we create the new bullet, we're going to do new bullet dot already split equals true. And now, no matter how much we click the split, it only splits once. If we shoot a ton and split, they all split because the way we did this. And yeah, that's very simple how to split a bullet. Here is the stuff we added, and here are the variables. It's quite simple once you understand the trigonometry, and if you don't, you can actually look up online the functions, the rotation functions, if you get a bit confused on what you want to do. Okay, hopefully you was able to learn from this, and if you have any questions, you could ask me on YouTube, or you could even reach out to me on Discord. I have a help section on there. You just ask me anything on there, I'll see if I could help you. Bye!